If you really want to know what a hero looks like, if you really want to know the things that a hero does consistently, without exception, every single day, if you want to know how a hero treats people, then you need only to look in the mirror. We've been told, and you've probably heard this too, I, I grew up hearing this, this idea that heroes are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I bet you've heard that too. And what I've learned through this hero effect journey from studying hundreds of companies and, and looking at the great performers and, and world-class achievers is I think we've had it wrong. I think we've had it wrong this whole time. And where I've landed on this idea and why this message has resonated with so many different companies is that heroes are extraordinary people who show up every day and choose not to be ordinary. You know, I've given this speech hundreds of times and it's never been the same. I never give the same speech twice. There's core content that is, that is central to the message. There are principles and, and, and ideas that I share with every audience, but every speech is different with the theme and the outcomes and the takeaways that the meeting planners and the owners and the, the senior leadership of these organizations, it's what they want to have happen. It's not forcing my message into their meeting, but rather tailoring my message to support their meeting. I sat down with them and I had my yellow pad out and I said, what would you like for me to talk about? They said, we're not really sure, but we want it to be different. We don't want the same old stock speech. We don't want to hear the leadership vision and communication stuff. We want to honor these people. They're really, really good at what they do and they work really, really hard to serve our customers. We want to remind them that what they do matters. In fact, a lot of our customers look at this group of people and they consider them to be heroes. So here we are in the Grand Ballroom at the Marriott in Louisville, Kentucky. It's, uh, it's almost 10 o'clock and as you can see, the room right now is empty, but tomorrow morning there's gonna be a thousand people in here for an organization that is here for an annual conference, Leadership Summit, and they're gonna pack this ballroom and expect to hear a message from me. And that message is called the Hero Effect. And the Hero Effect message is really, in its, in its most simplistic state, it's about being your best when it matters the most, showing up every single day of your life and giving your best at work and at home. And my goal is that they walk away with something that not only influences their professional life, but something that goes home with them and helps them in every area of their life, from being a parent, to being a friend, to being a great spouse, and then taking that into the workplace and being great at what they do every single day. The hero effect, being your best when it matters the most. Would you please welcome Kevin Brown. And the hero effect is about a strategy. It's about a strategy for showing up every single day and helping people with no strings attached. It's about creating an exceptional experience for the people you serve at work and at home. It's about taking 100% responsibility for your attitude, your actions, and your results every single time. You see, heroes don't get caught up in who made the mistake or why does this circumstance exist. They focus squarely all the time on creating the best possible outcome for the people they serve. And the last thing I've learned about heroes is that they see life very differently. They see life through the lens of optimism. They see people not as they are, but as they can be. They see situations not as it is, but as it should be. Disney is a magical place. It's magical because when you go there, your money disappears. <laughs> All of it. Everything you own stays in Orlando. To tell you this story, I need to introduce you to my son. His name is Josh Brown. If you met Josh Brown, he would tell you his name is Josh Brown. He thinks it's hyphenated, all one word. <laughs> Josh Brown has autism. We've known that since he was three years old. When he was seven years old, he discovered Walt Disney World. And if you know anything about kids with autism, you know they tend to obsess on things. We waited until he was nine years old to make the trip because we wanted to make sure that he could enjoy it and that it wasn't so overwhelming for me. We got to Walt Disney World, we packed our bags. Now we went with a list, you have to understand this. Kids with autism, they like everything mapped out. By the minute our trip was mapped out. My wife's background is accounting and finance. We showed up at Walt Disney World with an Excel spreadsheet. 
I was so excited about this trip for my baby boy. I knew what this meant to him, and I wanted it to be special. We got up the next, the next morning, and I said, Josh Brown, where are we eating breakfast? He said, Dad, we're eating in this hotel. We're going to ease you into this. No lines, no trams. Smart boy. He knows his father well. I told my wife that I would not work. I did not tell her that I wouldn't pay attention to what's going on at Disney. So my radar's up, I'm paying attention, we go downstairs, hostess greets us, giant smile, and I'm making mental notes, giant smile, it's nice. <laughs> I mean giant smile, welcome Brown family, we're so glad that you're here, we have a table just for you. Brown family, nice touch. Table, table just for us, that, that's really, really cute. She takes us to this table, she sits us down and she tops it off with this, Brown family, may I be the first to wish you a magical day. <laughs> oh, you people. <laughs> she leaves, waitress comes over, waitress has no expression whatsoever, no giant smile, and she actually looks a little bit ticked off. She comes over and she says, can I get your drink order? And my wife says, you can get our drink order, but I need to tell you, my son's on a very special diet. There's a lot of things he can have and a lot of things he can't have. And before Lisa could say another word, waitress put her hand in my wife's face and said, ma'am, I'm going to need to stop you there. I'm not going to be able to take your order you're gonna to need to speak to the executive chef. From the back of the restaurant comes the executive chef, big white chef coat, giant chef Boyardee hat. She comes out, giant smile. She, she comes out and she looks at Josh Brown and she says, good morning, sunshine. And he lowered his head and he said, good morning. He's really, really shy. And she said, my name is B. I'm the executive chef at Walt Disney World. How can I help? She pulls a notebook out and she begins asking my wife questions. Tell me what he likes to have. Tell me how you make that. What's in that? I've never heard of that. Most important question, what's his favorite? She's writing everything down word for word. She gets done. She puts her notebook away. She looks at Josh Brown and she says, okay, sunshine, what's for breakfast? He said, apple pancakes, please. It's his favorite. She said, oh, sunshine, I'm so sorry. I don't have the ingredients to make that. Your mom told me how to make it, but I don't have the ingredients. I'm so sorry. How about some bacon and eggs and some special toast? Big treat. He said, okay. She disappeared. Miss Personality came back and took the rest of our order. <laughs> we ate. We left. We were completely satisfied. Day two at Disney. Josh Brown, where are we eating breakfast? Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. Who? <laughs> I looked at my wife with a very confused look. She's seen it a million times. I said, what is he talking about? She said, the executive chef. Her name was B, B-E-A. He said, Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. I said, Brother, we've got a spreadsheet. We're supposed to go somewhere else today. He said, Dad, I want to go see Aunt B. Guess where we went? No reservations downstairs. Hostess greets us. Brown family, welcome back. No reservation, no problem. We have a table just for you. I'm sure you do. <laughs> she, takes us, she takes us to the exact same table we were at the day before. The exact same table. Guess who's working our section? Miss Personality. And she still hadn't got the memo. You would have thought that they covered it in orientation that she works at the happiest place on earth. Don't you think somebody would have covered that with her? She didn't even make it to our table. She saw it was us and just went to the back of the restaurant. From the back of the restaurant, Aunt B. She comes out and she says, good morning, sunshine, to which I promptly said, good morning. She said, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> she looks at Josh Brown and she says, good morning, sunshine. He says, good morning. She says, what's for breakfast? He said, apple pancakes, please. She said, you got it, sweetheart. Coming up. I said, time out, Aunt B. Time out. Time out. You remember us from yesterday? Yes, sir. Aunt B, you remember that he's on a special diet. Sir, why are you calling me Aunt B? <laughs> that, is, that is a fair question. That is a fair question. I said, okay, it's a, family, it's a family thing. I'm sorry. But you remember us. Yes. Yesterday you didn't have the stuff. True. Today you do? Yes. Where did you get it? The store. Oh, so you sent someone to the store. No, sir. I stopped on my way home. We have them all over Florida. Anybody can go. <laughs> I asked probably the dumbest question I've ever asked anybody in my life. I looked at her and I said, B, I said, why would you do that? Profound answer. I thought that's what he wanted. Let me make a note. Give the customer what they want, whether we serve it or not. Ball game. Guess where we ate every day for eight days. You know, I, I have this belief that, you know, we have to move people to move mountains. And so often, so often in business, we're, we're so focused on moving files and moving paper and moving product and, and doing all of our stuff. And we forget that it's about moving people, moving them from, from where they are to, to someplace better, to someplace new, to, to someplace great, maybe someplace that they didn't even think they could get to. And, you know, one of the greatest joys for me is when 
when when I'm able to make that connection with an audience and and, and I'm not like a lot of speakers and you know I, I don't use PowerPoint I don't use flip charts I I, I rely on good old-fashioned communication and connection I want to use stories that resonate with people about real life fully present and accounted for, we can give them that word or that touch or that, that moment in time where they were recognized and they feel special and they feel worthy and they feel like somebody has validated their existence, that they've been seen and they've been heard and that they matter. And that is an art that most people never, ever learn. I mean, the trick is the people that we admire, the companies that we want to do business with, everybody that we go, wow, they're special. They knocked it out of the park. They figured out they were born extraordinary and they show up every single day and choose not to be ordinary. And the question becomes, who in your life makes you better? You can look back on your whole life and see the people who show up and make you better at work and at home. But it's not about who makes us better all the time, it's about who's better because they know us. Who's better? because you showed up, whose life is easier because you showed up, whose problems are solved because you showed up. There's an old saying that says if you cut an apple, you can count the seeds in the apple, but if you plant the seed, you can never count the apples that come from those seeds, and that's how it is with life. As we sat there and talked, I was reminded of John Maxwell who said, when we die, they will summarize our entire life in one sentence and carve it in a piece of stone. Doesn't it make sense to choose today what they're gonna write on that rock? Doesn't it make sense today to choose how we're gonna live our life? And every time there's somebody on the other end of that phone, every time somebody crosses your path in this little space called now, every time they show up, you bring your best stuff because it always matters the most, every single time. Ladies and gentlemen, time is now. The world needs heroes and more importantly, the world needs your hero. The world needs that extraordinary person that you were created to be to show up every day and bring your best stuff to the present moment and pour it into the lives of others. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Brown. I am so honored that you would consider me as your keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Brown. Thank you all so very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it.